video, I want to show you how to graph a scattergram in your graphing calculator. Here is an example of a word problem that would involve graphing a scattergram. Take a moment, pause the video, and read this problem. So what we had was tuition over the years. So in my graphing calculator, I'm going to display the years and I'm going to display the tuition. So the first thing that you want to do is press the stat button. The stat button is right next to the arrows. And then you're going to press enter on edit. Now what you have is L1, L2. L1 represents the X and L2 represents the Y's. And what I'm going to do is enter each one of my data points. First the years and then the tuition. And just for the sake of time, I'm going to speed this up because it took me forever to do this. Data points entered. Now press second Y equals and that will get us to our stat plot. And we're going to press enter on plot one. We're going to press enter to make sure that the on button is selected and we have our type being the scattergram. Our X list is L1, our Y list is L2, and then our marks are just going to be, you can pick any mark you want to. Now we press the zoom. If you press zoom and you scroll down, you're going to get to zoom stat. And this is what's going to make our window big enough to catch all of our data points that we entered into our calculator. And this is our scattergram. Now, if we want the y equals mx plus b, we want the actual equation. What we're going to do is go back to stat, press enter on stat, and then press your arrow button over until you get to calc and go down to linear regression, which is the fourth option. If you press enter, see you have your equation so you see at the top y equals mx plus b they tell you the a value is the slope that's like your m and then b is the y-intercept let's say we want to put this line into our graph so we go back to calc press linear regression and we actually want to put this graph in our y1 so you press VARS, which is right below the arrows, the arrow button over to functions, and then press enter on Y1. If you press enter again, you see the same thing that was displayed before, but if you go to Y equals, you'll see that equation into our calculator. And press graph, and you have the line right there. Here's an example of a rational inequality. Now, if you remember from our previous video, what we did was set the numerator and denominator equal to zero to find our points to put on a number line, and then we had to test each interval. So I'm going to show you how to enter this rational expression into your calculator in order to test each interval. So this is the problem that we're working with. So to enter the rational expression, you turn your calculator on and you go to y equals. This is where you tell the calculator what equation are you working with or what expression are you working with. Now the numerator has to be in parentheses and the denominator has to be in parentheses. So as you see, I put parentheses x minus 3, then I divide by parentheses x plus 5. You have to do this in order to let the calculator know that the top is together and the bottom is together. Now what I do is press second windows and that will get me to my um, table set. Now if you scroll down to where it says independent, you want to make sure your independent is set to ask. So you're going to press enter on ask. Then you go to your table set. Now your table set should be blank and then you can enter any X value that you want to.
Here is one more example that we'll try. You want to pause the video and make sure you have this written down. Okay, let's enter this rational expression. We go to our y equals. Remember the numerator and the denominator has to be in parentheses. So I put parentheses 2x squared plus 5 divided by parentheses x, and then I have another parenthesis around the x plus 1. So it's almost like you have a double parenthesis in your denominator. One parenthesis goes around the x plus 1, and then the other parenthesis goes around the whole denominator. Now I go to second table set and make sure my independent is set to ask, and then I press second graph to get to my actual table, and then I enter any value that I want to. I love negative 10. <laughs> and remember, you can't put the actual data points that you found when you set the numerator and denominator equal to 0. You can't choose those numbers. As you see, I put negative 1 in there, and it says error. So we can't do that. Pick test points with, that are within each interval. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this is helpful. And let me know if you have any questions. Leave any comments below or you can email me.